Today, a Navy SEAL was killed in combat Coordinated against ISIS, ISIS attack in Iraq. On US ISIS fighters killing Charles Keating yesterday during a firefight in Iraq. Honored for the hero he is, tributes being made in his memory. Chuck was full of aloha, but was also a ferocious warrior. a lot of attention because today we honor Chief Special Warfare Officer Charles Keating IV. There's kind of that quintessential phrase of someone walks into a room and lights it up. He was way beyond that. You know, we've lost people over the years, but I think this, it pulled the ground out from under us. I have my own kids, so, you know, I just could never imagine. I think that's what really hurts, is when he passed, seeing how it affects, you know, your kids and your wife, because we were all close. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, they always say your best thoughts are in the shower. Those are always my worst thoughts, which are now. The best thing about being in the SEAL team is, is the guys. But, but it's also <laughs> the worst because, because you lose them. So it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> I was the commanding officer of SEAL Team 1 at the time Charlie was killed. You, you kind of try and take a pause operationally because you want to make sure guys are, are OK mentally to get back out and operate. You can't sit and dwell because you, know, you, you got to keep going. The SEAL community, they face things that the the average person will never understand. The community at large deals with a lot of very serious problems. Uh, depression is a is a big issue. We've seen a, a huge rise in uh, suicide. We have spouses that have killed themselves. There's, I think, upwards of a 90% divorce rate. You know, and then taking it down a level from there, I would say communication problems. Um, and that obviously lends itself to the high divorce rate. You're kind of robbed of life a little, just because your spouse is gone so much. You miss out on all the family time. Our SEALs are gone when they're in a work up to deployment 270 plus days a year. In March, I'll be going on another deployment. Uh, <clears throat> and I think this one's going to be really tough because I, <laughs> I now have a daughter, so. My three-year-old daughter is saying, I miss daddy this much, you know, with all of her hands as wide as she can get. I can't replace those things. Those are challenges that we face that you can't fix. Missing out on first day of school, birthdays, learning how to throw the football, the first time he walked. I miss the first time that he said a word. Every, every monumental moment a parent has, because of my job, I have, I've missed. Not when they're gone and they're going through all of these things, it's when they come home. You know, to, to leave combat and, you know, hours later, you're you're face to face with your family. Like, that's a, that's a pretty drastic um, kind of change of scenery and transition. You know, these guys watch things and see things that are inhuman. They don't mean to, but they bring home what they see. And it affects the whole family unit. We have four children, so um, daddy, daddy, daddy gets kind of overwhelming sometimes, I think. So it's hard for him to come back and have to be the support when he can barely you know, hold it together himself. There's no real uh, decompression, unfortunately. My daughter's 18. And my husband was gone her entire childhood. He has a really hard time communicating with her, and I, it's not his fault, because he's such a good dad. He would come back, and it would be like, kind of like interacting with a stranger again. I had this habit of just bottling it up. I didn't say how it made me feel, but on the inside, like, it was, it's just kind of hard to deal with. I was the ombudsman. I saw a lot of kids struggling, you know, um, parents coming to me asking, you know, for help with their children. 
after everything happened with Charlie, we we sat down and thought about, you know, what is it that we want to do? How can we how can we honor his incredible life? As we got into it, we found out there's an enormous divorce rate in the SEAL teams because of the stresses and, and difficulty of the lifestyle. Charlie felt like these guys were his family. So we thought, what can we do to help? There's so many organizations that address just the veteran and, and the things that they're going through, um, which is wonderful. It's fantastic. When you think back, there, there haven't been very many programs that are focused solely on the family and building that family resilience within the community. So when you see that gap, you know it needs to be filled. It's been trial and error with with the military. With how do we help these guys when they get home? How do they? How do we reintegrate them back into society and to their families? You know, they did the, the Disneyland thing for a while, and it was, in my opinion, probably the worst place you could ever go to after a, de a deployment for six months. You're walking around, getting shot at, and worried about vehicles exploding or people exploding, and and then you get thrust into Disneyland, crowds of people and parking lots and noise and but you don't have your you don't have your buddies, you don't have your gun. And so you just feel very naked and vulnerable. And as much as you don't want to think about it, that's the reality of the world that we live. That's how the C4 ranch came into fruition. I'm a former Navy SEAL. I was in for 10 years and, and now I'm I'm serving as the director of development for the C4 Foundation. The C4 Ranch is a unique and really groundbreaking project. The C4 Ranch is 560 acres of beautiful property. A place to come, a place to go. They're with their families. They're still with the guys that they deployed with. It's just a, a chance to kind of get away from everything, get out here and like decompress, reconnect. Our kids have so many great memories here. You know, it's kind of hard to count how many. We always do an outside movie night. My husband loves to set up a zip line. The animals around here uh, are amazing. The, you know, the kids' eyes just light up. In the chicken coop, there's a rooster. And my son, um, the rooster came at him. Um, and he talks about it nonstop. He is eating dinner. He puts down his fork. And it was a revelation. He goes, he goes Dad, we're going to the chicken coop. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he goes, oh yeah, I'm gonna ninja kick that rooster. <laughs> and it's just m moments like that that we're gonna talk about that for the rest of our life. By the Case way, he did point. not ninja kick the rooster. No. <laughs> the rooster's fine. <laughs> we like the families to feel like they can come here without structure because they live a life that is so structured. It gives you a place to just kind of unwind and detach from everything and kind of just focus on your family. One of the first times I've ever seen him cry with our kids about the deployment was when we came here as a family. We really as a family never talked about it until we came here. Something about being here brings out the ability to kind of open up and be vulnerable. It not only helps them, but they own it. They own this place. Charlie and Deanne talk about this as, as the the SEAL community's ranch. You know, not not their ranch, but this this is yours. This is the community's. A place where all the teams can come together and bring memorabilia from whatever deployment or family or anything that makes them feel good and have it on the wall. What we think is important, what we want our culture to be, we built that here. The very first thing the commanding officer said he said, this is sacred grounds. And that resonates throughout the entire community. The opportunity to develop this ranch in, into a, a truly one of a kind, incredible uh, place for our SEAL families to escape to, um, that's our dream. And to have this as, as close as it is, just you know, an hour and a half away from, from Coronado uh, and just drive out here and be in a different world um, is, is amazing and the programs that they're offering. It's above and beyond just being able to come up here. I'm a Navy SEAL spouse of 24 years, and I'm also the director of programs for the C4 Foundation. I work directly with uh, Dr. Glenn Fox. He's a neuroscientist. It's a neuroscience-based program. What he's on the forefront of in his research is studying how the feeling of gratitude is one of the greatest predictors of success. I think the focus has always been treatment. We dive a little deeper into how to 
really heal people, we start to look at prevention. You know, we don't want to be the, the pill that everybody takes when they're already sick. We offer Under Our Frog program, which stands for Families, Resilience, Optimism, and Gratitude, several different programs. Within that is Warrior Reset, which is an integrative approach to healing where the guys can come out together before they deploy and before they have their time off with their family so that they're ready to just be with family. We also have spousal retreats, family visits to the ranch, any family that wants to come here and stay at the ranch and experience it on their own. A little over an hour drive, and I can come up here whenever I want, whether it's just me all by myself, I need some alone time, or it's the entire family. We also offer command offsites or a leadership offsite for SEAL teams and each command, like what you would think a corporate retreat would be. So we've had whole platoons out here. We'll have a variety of specialists up here to help them out. There's a uh, psychologist that talked through mental resiliency and just becoming a better father, team guy, person, husband. We have found through talking with the guys that come out here, a real need is in just de-stressing. These really strong guys can be very broken. And sometimes something just as simple as silence can be very healing. It's not magic, but it does, it does amazing things. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it in people that come here. Last week, we, the, the marriage was not an A+. Plus. Like, we were fighting. And I'm driving a four-wheeler. I've got her hanging on to me. I've got my daughter going through this scenic landscape. And it legitimately reset our marriage. And it was a special moment, because if this didn't exist, we would not have been able to, to have that moment. One of the team psychologists said, you know, it's such a simple idea, it's brilliant. He felt like this type of facility, this type of thing would be needed in every branch of the military with every special operation force. It's just a unique opportunity for the current warfighter. We got into this thing thinking we were gonna have this, you know, a, a little cabin out in the desert, and somehow <laughs> this is, ballooned into something that none of us ever imagined. And the demand is, is through the roof. When the Charlie Keating Foundation got started, it actually means something and does something. This has tangible results and instantly started helping people. Part of what we're doing is, is preserving the, the spirit of Charlie Keating IV, because that's what Charlie was all about. He's all about community and friendship and family. I love seeing all the pictures around um, of Chuck, you know, in every little corner you see a, a memory. You could say we're helping other people. One way to look at it is we're really helping ourselves. These guys remind me of him. He would be so happy that his brothers and their families can come and experience something so beautiful. The place is tangible. It's, it's not going anywhere. Every time we come up here, it's like, it's like, it never happened, you know? It's like he never, it's like he never left. It's just giving us all a chance again. Something about this place, it just, it's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity and a humbling one. Uh, I'm just so honored to be a part of this organization. I, I see the beauty here. I see, I see, of course, of course I see God and the beauty. In that, I see Charlie also.